I feel like I can finally breathe now after months of preparation. We have finally launched Retro Rewind, our movie, TV, and anime channel that's going to be connected to Retro Rebound. It's a part of the Retro family. We also launched a brand new Patreon. If you're interested in any of that, I'll have the trailer link down below. I'll have the Patreon link down below if you want to support what we're doing there. I'll talk about it more extensively on this channel within the week or so. I want to let things cook there, get all the content out for the week, and then we'll discuss how it's going to impact what we're doing here. So we'll talk then, but just I want to thank you all who have supported me on this journey thus far because of your support here we're able to branch out and do a lot of new things and assemble a team to make it possible and i'm so excited so yeah please if you got a minute i would really appreciate you checking that out but if you're just here for fallout news don't worry got you covered for that as well because it is a day for sure yesterday we talked about the fallout 4 next gen update my boy lone vault wanderer inspired that video and today we're talking about the fallout tv show where the release date has moved and we have other bits of information like season two already potentially confirmed before we even got season one we're going to talk about all of that and more ladies and gentlemen if you are new here and you're into what's going on with fallout i warned you at the start of this week it's going to be a lot of fallout everywhere so prepare yourselves i'm gonna be insufferable all right let's start off with the release date moving fallout series gets new release date on prime video this comes from variety where they write prime video has announced that fallout adapted from the retro futuristic video game franchise of the same name will premiere all eight episodes on april 10th at 6 p.m pacific time the special release includes a live global fan premiere of the first episode where viewers worldwide can choose their faction and interact with other fans via a live chat function. So yeah, this is all going through Twitch. Uh, there are popular streamers who are going to watch the first episode or two with fans. But yeah, they're dropping the show another day early. So you might be a little confused here because originally, as we reported on this show, it was supposed to be April 12th. Then when they dropped the trailer, they said all eight episodes are debuting April 11th. Now they're doing April 10th and they're doing it with some Twitch events. So they keep just inching this release date forward. And I'm not complaining outside of we just got ready for Retro Rewind and we were basing it around this TV show where, yes, we will be reviewing season one over there. Fret not. That was a big part of the plans there. And they just kept moving it forward and forward more and more. And Locke and I were going, yo, they're killing us right now. But like as a Fallout fan, all right, give it to me sooner. I'm not going to complain. So, yeah, we're going to have our season one review out around Saturday over on Retro Rewind. I'll make sure to inform you all on that. I'll post it on the community tab, all that fun stuff. So, yeah, make sure to subscribe so you're ready for that. But this is exciting because we're getting the thing we're excited for a bit early. It could show a level of confidence. I also wonder with the integration of streamers, if there's that other adverse effect here of lesser confidence that I'm currently interpreting it as. I say that because they keep inching it forward, obviously creating some buzz. And I'm like, is there not enough buzz? And they're not seeing enough subscriptions made in advance of this show that they need to keep creating hype. I don't know. I could be wrong about that. But it's interesting nonetheless to see them continue to inch it forward. So yes, 6 p.m. Pacific time, April 10th is when season one drops. It's eight episodes and we're going to fly through that bad boy. No weekly episodes here. So yeah, I'm probably going to watch all of that in like a single day and we'll see where things lie. Of course, here on this channel, we're going to talk about the effects it's going to have on the Fallout franchise moving forward, what season two could be. There's going to be so much to unpack, certainly, and I'm really excited for it. So yeah, market calendars not too long now april 10th 6 p.m pacific time fallout show drops on prime now i also mentioned a second season we don't even know what's gonna really happen the first season i've started to mildly go on media blackout because i know when it comes to tv and movie well, while i don't watch them too too much and we're working on that through retro rewind I, I do know that they like to spoil a lot of things in their trailers and games have slowly adapted that with some mega spoilers in their trailers but i've started to slowly fade away from like the interviews with the cast the extra trailers the extra clips like i'm sold on the show i'm ready to watch it you keep inching the release date forward i don't need to know anymore but i say all that because we don't really know too much about the story other than we have a vault dweller a member of the brotherhood of steel and a bounty hunter who's a ghoul and their story is pretty much going to synchronize at some point down the line it looks like the Brotherhood of Steel member is hunting down the bounty hunter, and it looks like Lucy, who's the vault dweller, is roaming for the first time, doing something for her vault, wanting to see something beyond the vault life itself. And so we're going to see how this all comes together. But otherwise, we only know very little that there's something in a briefcase that's very important. And so who knows if this ends on a cliffhanger or not? 
And I say all that because it's been confirmed as well through Variety, Amazon's fallout to film second season in California with a $25 million tax credit. Now you may be wondering how the heck that even happened in the first place. This article actually covers that, so we'll get into it. But they write here, Fallout, the post-apocalyptic series debuting this week on Amazon Prime, is expected to relocate to California for its second season thanks to $25 million in California tax credits. The California Film Commission announced Monday that it has awarded $152 million in tax incentives to a dozen TV shows. Fallout had the largest budget of any of the TV shows at $153 million in qualified expenditures for the season. The first season was produced mostly in New York with some filming in Utah. California's tax incentive is largely geared towards luring away TV shows that have already started production in another state or overseas. Such shows get a credit worth 25% of their qualified expenditures and also get 20% in every subsequent season. Overall, the state awards about $330 million annually, with 57% going to TV shows and 43% going to films. The credit is intended to combat runaway production, the tendency of productions to chase tax incentives in other states and in countries like Canada and the UK. Studios apply for California credits during multiple funding rounds each year, and credits are awarded based on the potential for job creation. So yeah, a lot of uh, American economy shebang going on over here. But what we're learning is that there is going to be a second season here. So the question now just piles on of where this story is going to go. I've always wondered since this was first announced, how conclusive it's going to be when it wraps up. Like that was one of the beautiful things I think about with Cyberpunk Edge Runners. I know it's kind of different, but it's tied to a video game at least. Like there was a sense of finality here. And Fallout stories always end in a way of finality while also being open-ended because you wonder how as we inch down the timeline with another installment and another installment okay how is the wasteland reacting to those events there like how is project purity impacting what's happening in fallout 4 and in many ways you see it interweave in subtle manner so i i wonder if what's happening in fallout season one is going to be connected to fallout season two at all or does that story end and then we don't get any of those characters again in season two because i feel like that would just make sense for what fallout is then you leap down the timeline some more and boom you've got yourself a new cast of characters maybe you weave in a couple of those remaining members from the end of the first season i could see it going that way it also makes you wonder if we're about to see like two seasons of a fallout tv show before any sort of mainline entry that seems very likely i also wonder and this is partially a fear not because i think the show will be bad but look i i'm excited for a fallout tv show but it is no replacement for the games, and I hope that's not the thought process here, which is, hmm, we could give Obsidian the rights to do New Vegas 2, we could do this Fallout 3 remaster, we could do multiple seasons of the Fallout TV show. I would like all of it, of course, but I just worry that they're using this as the fill-in for your Fallout fix, like this and Fallout 76. It's kind of what we talked about yesterday in our video on the Fallout 4 Next Gen update of, is that it looks more and more like Bethesda Game Studios, Xbox, Amazon have a vested interest in driving, well, interest, into Fallout 76 because that's fully monetized. You got the Battle Pass subscription service, microtransaction shop, all of it up and ready to go for when you're ready for your Fallout fix and you're really in the Fallout move thanks to that TV show, you can drive all your money in there so i do wonder if season two indicates that this is going to be the trend moving forward and that it's going to fill in just for the gaps that the games are leaving now because bethesda wants to hold on to the ip they don't trust anyone else with it but they're not going to do it themselves because they're doing elder scroll 6 next and then after that it's going to be fallout 5 but it'll be like 2030 i'll be in my 40s by that point in time like hey, we got to figure something out here but that's that's what i'm trying to say in the long manner wrapping up this article they say even when a show has been allocated tax credits to move to california that does not guarantee that it'll actually do so a year ago amazon was awarded 25 million dollars to relocate the second season of citadel to california however the show was later withdrawn from the program and the money has been put back into the general pool for other shows it's been reported that the show will begin filming its second season in september in Toronto so they may not even take up the grant but nonetheless it looks like they're going to be doing a second season so we'll see how all that goes I wonder also because there's rumors of the Fallout 3 remaster and I will just say that with how they're handling the Fallout 4 next gen update and clearly missing that window with the TV show it looks like that Bethesda is not great at synchronizing media with big days like that's just something we all expect out of them especially Fallout and they just continue to fail at that so my galaxy brain says 
oh, well, let's take that Fallout 3 remaster. We're going to have this second season now focused on the East Coast. Boom. Easy synchronization there. Let's go make a lot of money. That's probably not going to happen because Bethesda's taught us otherwise. But I'll continue to hope that they actually wisen up and do so. Anyway, last bit here. Previews are in. So there was a Fallout TV show event from weeks ago. Forbes has a bit of a roundup here where they write the first Amazon Prime Fallout show previews are glowing. Some highlights, a lengthy piece from Insider Gaming says, take it from me, this is a show that's certainly worth watching. Even if you're not a Fallout fan, it's setting itself up to be a great series in its own right. I'm immensely excited to A, watch the first episode again, and B, binge the rest of the series. When it releases, and YouTuber Mr. Ruffle Waffles writes, seeing clear elements of the game make their way into the storytelling of TV was really fun. The Pip-Boy, the way the weapons worked, even elements of the way the combat was choreographed all that gave me the fallout flavor which was really nice walton goggins is fantastic kyle mclachlan is so endearing i would go to war for this man and i particularly like how they mentioned the choreography here for the the combat i say that because when you think of vats and i think of fallout 4 where when you commit to that critical hit and you see the camera shift to you and it's got a little bit of a shake and then it goes to the enemy and when that head gets blown off and it's all in slow-mo and the physics just kick in it's so wild I am praying they have a moment like that where they just gamify the scene and they have vats on screen. So really hoping for that. But yeah, the, the previews have been great. It seems like people are liking at least what episode one offers. And we're not going to have to wait too long to find out for ourselves. So we'll see in due time. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all of your Fallout news for today's video. I'm looking forward to seeing your thoughts on what you think of season one moving up again. What you think of season two being confirmed. Some of these early previews. Let me know down below. Other than that, again, thank you for your support in making things like Retro Rewind and our new Patreon possible. Again, they'll be linked down below if you're interested in checking those out, but I appreciate you being here. Nonetheless, take excellent care of yourselves, and I will see you in the next video. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.